Hey, sis. I have something amazing to tell you. Hi, Camilla. What is it? I finally got a job. Really? That's fantastic. Yep. I'm going to be a bride. What? A bride? Are you saying you're getting married? That's right. Isn't it wonderful? As soon as I finish university, we're going to have a big wedding and tie the knot. And then I'll be working in a way as his devoted housewife. You know, making him happy, keeping the house tidy, that sort of thing. Oh, you're going to be a housewife? I see. Well, that's quite a surprise. So even though you spent years studying hard and getting a degree, you're not going to use it at all? I mean, it's your choice, of course. But it seems like a shame to throw away your potential if you ask me. Still, I'm very happy for you. This is unbelievable news. Thanks. And yeah, don't worry. I discussed it with him already, and he's fine with it. Actually... I've been looking for a job for the past few months, but it's been so stressful with exams and everything. So when I was venting to him about it, he said, if you're really that stressed out about finding a job, then why don't you just quit and be my housewife? Very sweet of him, don't you think? <laughs> he said he wants me to support him by taking care of our future home. Wow. So you're really giving up on finding a job just like that? Well, I guess I have some reservations about that. But if you two are happy with your decision, then I won't stand in your way. Thanks for being supportive. By the way, who is the guy you're marrying? The one you've mentioned before? Yeah, Steve. He's the one I'm marrying. He's four years older than me, and he's working his way up at a big company. Next year... He might be sent to their branch in Europe to work there as an expat. So if that happens, I'll go with him, of course. Wow, he sounds like a go-getter. So you might be moving to Europe then? Yeah, I know, right? It's all very thrilling, isn't it? Unfortunately, that means I won't be able to keep in touch with you, though. I'm cutting you off. But thanks for raising me and looking after me all these years. Now you'll be free to do whatever you want without having to worry about your little sister, right? Wait, what are you saying? You're cutting me off? I don't get it. Why can't we keep in touch anymore? I mean, even if you move abroad, we can still call and text each other. Why would you say you're cutting me off? Because I'm cutting you off. I won't see you ever again once I get married. And I'm going to erase all your contact details so we'll never talk to each other again, okay? It'll be farewell forever. What are you saying, Camilla? Have you lost your mind? Why would you do something like that? Why would you even say that? Tell me you're kidding. Sorry, nope. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Thanks for everything, Bianca. You've been a great sister. Don't take it personally. I'll send you a message on your wedding day to let you know how it goes. And after that, you'll never hear from me again. Goodbye, Bianca. No, hold on for a second. It's not goodbye yet. Explain yourself clearly. Why do you have to cut me off just because you're getting married? It makes no sense. We are sisters. Your marriage doesn't change that. Yeah, but let's be honest. You're a high school dropout, remember? And I'm going to be a wife of a hotshot career man in Europe. In other words, I'll be living a lifestyle completely different from yours. I just won't have anything in common with you. What with your low status and bad reputation? So I think I'll use getting married as a chance to cut you off. That way is better for both of us, don't you agree? What? I don't understand, Camilla. 
Where is this coming from? What are you talking about? Well, basically, for those reasons, I'm ending our relationship. Cutting you off, in other words. Leaving you and your dull, low-caste lifestyle behind and moving on to be the wife of an elite expat working for a huge corporation. Exciting, isn't it? Too bad for you. All this means that I just won't, don't want you around anymore. How can you say that? You don't want me around anymore. But we're sisters. You can't just discard our bond like that. What about everything I've given up for you? Our parents died in a car crash. And I had to drop out of high school and get a job to support you. I sacrificed everything for you. My future, my education, and the chance to have a normal life. And now you're saying you don't want me anymore? And you're going to cut me off just because you're getting married? How could you do something like this? Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm very thankful to you for raising me all these years. Thanks for ruining your life for me. Thanks to you, I've been able to live how I please and even go to university. Not to mention finally meeting the man of my dreams. Then how can you say that? And then also say that you're cutting me off. Because, like I said, I, I don't want you anymore. You'll just be a nuisance from here on out. Sorry, I know that sounds cruel, but I'm going to be a rich woman living among the elites of society. I don't want a high school dropout sister around bringing me down. You're just a burden to me now, with nothing to offer. That's why I know if I don't end our relationship now, all you'll ever do is drag me down, you know? I can't have that. What? Do you really think that way? What is wrong with you? While my classmates have been struggling to find a job, I've already decided that I'm going to be a full-time housewife. And I don't have to worry about any of that nonsense. Awesome, isn't it? And on top of all that, my husband is a very successful man working at a big company, so I'll never have to worry about money. If anything, his salary is just going to keep going up from now on. I'm supposed to be living a glamorous, elite lifestyle from now on. If people find out I have a high school dropout sister, it's just going to ruin my new image. You're like a flaw or a stain. Besides, there's nothing you can do for me anymore, so I don't see the point in keeping you around. I can't believe this, Camilla. After everything I've done for you, you're calling me a stain. Is this new elite lifestyle of yours all that matters? Do I really mean that little to you? Well, think about it. From now on, I should be living the kind of lifestyle that everyone around me will envy and admire. But if I don't end our relationship, people will gossip. I'll be forever known as the girl with the high school dropout for a sister. And who wants to deal with that? You can see where I'm coming from, right? So that's why you want to cut me off? Because I'm not useful to you anymore? Yeah, that's right. You finally understand. I'm so lucky I'll have a successful husband. So I don't want my loser sister anymore. You're useless, so I'm cutting you off when I get married. You'll never see me again. Fine. If that's how you feel, it seems like you've made your choice. Good luck, Camilla. Yep. Bye, sis, and never bother me again, okay? Don't ever mention we're related, either. Okay, I won't. I hope you're happy with your new husband. From now on, I'm going to live for myself, too. Hi, is this Camila's sister, Bianca? Sorry for calling you out of the blue. Yes, this is Bianca. What can I do for you? Oh good, I got the right number. My name is Steve. I'm dating your younger sister. As you probably know, we're getting married very soon. Oh, nice to talk to you. I've heard a lot about you from my sister, but why are you calling me? Well, the thing is, there's actually something I wanted to ask you. It's very urgent. 
Do you have some time for me to ask you a few questions? Yeah, sure. I'm just on the train back from work right now, so I've got some time. Fire away. Thanks a lot. Well, where do I start? First of all, can you tell me about your life with Camila so far, huh? That's a bit broad. Sorry, I know this is kind of awkward. The thing is, since we're getting married soon, Camila and I have been talking a lot about money and what we're going to do next. But I just can't seem to get a clear answer from her. I have to admit, I'm at a loss on what to do. So I wanted to try asking you about how you and Camila have been surviving all these years, and how you've been living. I heard once that you sent her money every month for expenses? I'm sorry if this is too personal, but how much exactly do you usually send her? Okay, I'm a bit worried, but I'll answer your questions as best as I can. As for money, I usually send her about $3,000 per month. $3,000? That's way more than I expected. You really send her $3,000 every month? Rent in the big city is pricey, you know. So I thought that's about how much she needs to live as a student. Or at least, that's what she told me was the minimum amount. Of course, I wanted to send her a bit more than the minimum if I could. But I need to take care of myself too. And it's not like I'm rolling in dough. I also had to pay her tuition, you know? Please, don't judge me too harshly. You might have heard this from Camilla already, but I had to drop out of school because of family issues. I've never been to university or lived in the city before, so I'm not sure how much living costs. I've always just sent Camilla money whenever she asked for it, no matter how much. Well, wait, so is Camilla the one who asked for $3,000 a month? That's what she told you? I usually give her all tuition fees in one lump sum every year. But of course, she has other school fees for books and stuff. She sends me the amount of money she needs every month, and I pay it. I see. How do I say this? Well, I grew up in the city, and I went to university here too. I can tell you from experience that for a university student, $3,000 a month is too much. Really? Are you sure? There are plenty of student flats near the campus. The most expensive ones are about $700 a month. Even if you add living costs, a little over $1,000 is enough. As for books and school supplies, the cost is about the same every year. No university student needs $3,000 a month to live on. That's way too much. Seriously? I had no clue. So this is why she always had money, even though she wasn't working. She even bought me a $2,000 designer coat for my birthday, you know. $2,000? You're joking! I was shocked too. Her being a student and all. And I've only ever bought clothes from the secondhand store for myself. And here she is, spending $2,000 on a coat? Maybe this is why she doesn't know how to manage money. She even asked me to give her $5,000 pocket money a month. That's insane! So she'd have $8,000 a month as a student? She said the same thing when we were talking about how we're going to manage our money after we get married. She probably thinks that if her sister, who quit high school, can afford to pay her $3,000 a month, then I can easily give her $5,000. But I don't earn enough to fork over $3,000 a month, let alone $5,000. And yet she's demanding I give her $5,000 minimum. Are you serious? That's outrageous! I had no clue she was going around asking for that much! What the hell is she thinking? Yeah, I was stunned too. That's why I called you like this today. Thank you for answering my questions. It's been a big help. 
I feel like I've seen a side of her I never knew. I'm sorry about my sister. I had no idea. To tell you the truth, I was a bit shocked when she told me she was going to get married and be a full-time housewife without looking for a job at all. But now I'm finding out she's been asking her fiancé for some ridiculous amounts of money. Please, you don't have to apologize for anything. And I have to say, you're nothing like the person that I was expecting. Camila told me you were some wild delinquent or something, so I was actually scared to contact you, to be honest. She did? Thank you for being so nice to me. I know I'm just some guy calling you out of nowhere asking you about your financial situation, but you've been very friendly to talk to. I'm really glad I plucked up the courage to reach out to you. Hold on a second. Camilla said I was a delinquent? Yeah, she did. She told me that you were kicked out of high school for delinquency and that you were involved in all kinds of shady stuff, so I shouldn't have anything to do with you. What the hell? Is she serious? Yeah, Camila said your parents died when you were both young. And you went off the deep end and started getting into trouble and so on. She said she had a really hard upbringing and doesn't like to talk about her past. I've often heard her say that at least she makes a decent income for a delinquent when referring to you. Oh, wow. I don't know what's up with that, but the truth is totally different. It's true that our parents died when we were young, but I dropped out of school because I had to find a job and support us both. Not because I went off the deep end, but because I couldn't make a good living because I was just a kid. So I spent every day working non-stop at multiple places. I didn't have the time to get into trouble or be a delinquent. And I definitely wasn't kicked out of school. Because of all that, I never go out. And I basically have no friends. Oh, is that so? I think she probably lied to you about what kind of person I was. So you wouldn't have anything to do with me. Why would Camila do something like that? Because I'm a high school dropout. As she's gotten older, Camilla is worried about that kind of thing more and more. So when she told me she was getting married, she also announced that she'd be cutting me off. She said what? She wants to cut me off after we get married? Are you serious? That's what she said. So I'll be leaving her in your hands, I guess. She said she didn't want me around anymore and that I would just be a blot on her reputation. So, once you guys are married, she's never going to contact me again, apparently. That's unbelievable! But you raised her. She can't just abandon you like that. I can't believe Camila said that. Hey, is it okay if I come and see you in person? I want to talk to you face to face as soon as possible. In secret, of course. Camila doesn't need to know. Okay. That's fine. I'll let you know when I'm going to be free. I just need to check my calendar first. Hey, sis. I have some good news. I've decided not to cut you off after all. So I think I'll invite you to the wedding ceremony. Oh, really? What made you change your mind? You said you don't need me anymore, right? Well, actually, there is something you can do for me. I want you to help with our wedding costs. Is that okay? Are you kidding me? No, I'm serious. The thing is, I'm in charge of planning our wedding. At first, I thought it would be best to just have a simple, cheap ceremony. But while planning it all out, I found more and more things I want to have. And I've gone way over budget. So yeah, I think you could cover the extra cost. That would be a big help. I see. So in other words, I've become useful to you in the way that, say, a cash machine would be. 
Is that it? Oh, don't be like that. I'm your adorable little sister. You'd do anything for me, right? You've always given me money whenever I've asked for it, so there's no way you'd let me down on my wedding day. How much? Well, let's see. First of all, I want to change my dress from a $1,000 to a $10,000 one. I found a really beautiful dress that would fit me perfectly. What do you think? That's ten times more expensive than the original price. There's a ton of other things that I want to upgrade. So if you could give me $30,000, it would be a huge help. $30,000 for a wedding ceremony? Small price to pay for being able to stay in touch with your adorable little sister, right? I promise, I won't talk about cutting ties with you anymore. So, pay up. Yeah, I'll even let you come to the wedding. It's a fair deal, right? I just know you'll want to help me out in any way you can. And, well, if you don't want to pay up, then I guess I'll just have to cut ties with you after all. But you wouldn't want that, would you? I don't care. Actually... I think it would be better for both of us if we cut ties. What? Yeah, I choose that option. You can ask someone else for the $30,000. Good luck! Wait a minute. Have you gone mad? Are you seriously telling me you're going to cut ties with me? You can't mean that. I'm your only sister. I'm serious, Camilla. Why wouldn't I be? In fact, since the other day, I had already decided to let you go. And you turn around suddenly and tell me you'll keep in touch and invite me to the wedding. Make up your mind. Are you mad? You can't do this. What about me? If you don't help me out, I'll be in big trouble. I was sure you were going to pay for it, so I've already ordered the dress. Seriously, Camilla? I have to pay for it by the end of this week. You know that, but you're not going to help me pay? You can't be serious. If I can't pay in time, then what am I going to do about my wedding dress? How about we just call off the wedding altogether? I don't even want to marry you anymore, huh? Wait, Steve? Is that you? That's right, it's me. You're pretty sharp, huh? So, can you explain to me what's going on here? I let you handle the planning for the wedding because you wanted to do it, but I haven't heard a single word about the ceremony going over budget. And on top of that, you're asking your sister to pay the extra for you. $30,000. Just what the hell are you up to? No, wait a minute. It's, it's not what you think. And anyway, why are you using my sister's phone? What's going on? Did you trick me? Where is she right now? I was just talking to her, I swear. Bianca is sitting right across from me as I'm typing this. We're having a coffee together. What? You're having coffee with my sister? But why? What is this? I wanted to meet her, so I asked her to spare some time for me, and she agreed. I was a bit nervous because I thought she was going to be some wild delinquent like you said. But tell me, how could you lie about her like that? As far as I can see, she's nothing like what you said. I'll tell you what she is, though. She's your only sister, the woman who quit school to raise you and cared for you all your life without thinking of herself. She gave you all of her money to send you to college and had nothing left for herself. She's a wonderful big sister who anyone would be grateful to have. You don't deserve her. Wait, no, it's not like that, I swear. And that's not all I learned from talking to Bianca. You exploited her? You took advantage of her ignorance about the city and tuition fees. And you milked her for as much money as you could. Have you no conscience at all? Asking for her money and threatening to cut ties if she doesn't pay. How could you abuse her kindness like that? 
You're a monster, Camila. Don't say that. It's not like that. I swear. My sister's the only person who'll look after me, you see. I know I depend on her for everything, but what else can I do? Can you really fault me for that? Just drop this whole marriage thing. I've changed my mind completely. Let's break up. No way, but we're engaged. We can't just end it now. We're supposed to spend the rest of our lives together. And anyway, I already told all of my friends that I'm engaged. What am I going to tell them now? If you're set on getting married no matter what, then I have conditions. I don't mind if you want to be my full-time housewife, but you'll have to manage our living costs with $1,500 a month. Then if there's any money left from that at the end of each month, you can spend it on whatever you want. If you can do that, then I might reconsider breaking up with you. Are you insane? Who could live on $1,500 a month? I'm not going to agree to that. Even my high school dropout of a sister was able to send me $3,000 a month, you know? Why are you being so stingy? Listen, Camila, your sister is an amazing person. That's why she was able to do that. I work for a big company, and even I couldn't afford to pay that much every month. Don't lie to me. Of course you could. My sister was able to. You're a top worker at a big company. You should be able to give me $5,000 for living costs every month at least. So you can definitely afford to pay $3,000 every month. If that's really what you believe, then go out and get a job. See how much your starting salary is. See what it's like to work a job that will earn you that amount of money. And then maybe we can still get married. You're telling me to get a job now? But job hunting season is already over. I didn't look for anything because I was planning to be your housewife like we agreed. How am I supposed to find a job at a time like this? Okay, well, then you can forget about getting married. I had no idea you were such an idiot, Camila. Goodbye. Bianca, what am I going to do? Steve won't talk to me at all. He says he'll only reply to me if I find a job that pays $3,000 a month. Oh, really? Well, good luck with that. Hope you find one. But there aren't any. No matter where I look, the highest starting salaries I can find are $1,800 a month. And none of those places want me anyway. I've tried applying, and they've all turned me down. Wow, that sounds rough. What's going on here? How come you, a high school dropout, can afford to send me $3,000 a month when I can't even land a single job? It doesn't make any sense. I'm the one who has a university degree. I don't get why you can get a job, and I can't. The reason is simple. Really, you want me to tell you? It's because I'm more valuable to society than you are. Huh? What did you just say? I may be a high school dropout, but my performance at work speaks for itself. Because of that, I am appreciated by my bosses. And I have a key role in the company. Unlike you, I can make $20,000 a month. You what? Wait a minute, hold on. Since when do you make that kind of money? I may have quit high school, as you love to remind me, but even I can make that much. That's insane, I had no clue. I thought your salary was around $3,000 and that you were sending money to me by sacrificing yourself. Do you even know what kind of job I do? You don't, do you? Why would I tell you how much I make when you're not even curious enough to ask me what kind of job I have in the first place? It's not like that. Anyway, 
Good luck to you with your job search. You're going to need it if you don't find something soon. Your successful soon-to-be expat husband is going to dump you. Oh, you mean Steve? I don't care about him anymore. If I have you by my side, then I don't need anyone else. Huh. Where is this coming from? Well, you know, I can't find a job anyway, so I've decided to come back home. So you'll let me live with you, right? If you're really making $20,000 a month, then you must be really busy, right? So I'll do all the chores for you. Let's stick together from now on, okay? As sisters. I don't have a sister. Huh? What are you saying? When you told me you were going to cut me off, I agreed and decided not to think of you as my sister anymore. So I won't let you live with me. In fact, I don't want to see you ever again. No way. Wait a minute. You can't do that. You're just trying to scare me, right? You don't really mean it. I'm your only sister. You can't break ties with me that easily. If I remember correctly, you're the one who broke ties, weren't you? You're welcome to come back to your hometown if that's what you want. But you're not staying with me. Goodbye, Camilla. That was the end of Camilla and Steve's engagement. I heard that Camilla begged him to take her back many times, but he rejected her. Eventually, he left the US to work in Europe without Camilla, of course. As for my sister, she managed to graduate you from As for my sister, she managed to graduate from university without any issues. But she still couldn't find a job. She ended up working some sketchy night job because it paid well. I sacrificed so much for her to go to university. So, I was a bit angry to hear that she was wasting her degree. But, then again, why should I care about her fate? She's not my sister anymore. It seems she never made it big at her sketchy night job. Last thing I heard, she was living a miserable life. But maybe now she'll finally get what she deserves.